XGMI's Horizon 20 is a 3-laser 4K projector that promises huge capabilities and a lot of gaming features at a price that doesn't make you wins. Is it actually the right choice for you? Let's inspect. Hi, and so good to meet you. Well, this year XGMI rolled out a fresh lineup and Horizon 20 is no exception. Matter of fact, we talk about three high-end home cinema grade projectors and this is the plain Horizon 20 which is modest about specs compared to the other two but at the same time it is a beast when comparing to the competition. So in here I'm gonna dig into every feature and I'm gonna show you how it works, where it breaks and as always I'm gonna mix objective metrics with subjective impressions and a lot of use cases and tests. Let's start with the tech. Uh, projecting quality would be the first to cover and before I share my opinion about the image, here is one of the biggest additions for the first time on this XGMI home projector line. The lens shift technology is built in, letting you move the projected image up and down or left or right without touching the projector. Importantly, XGMI claimed that this happens without scaling or distortion. The only drawback to consider is that it disables most automatic smart lens alignment functions, but for a projector, which is meant to be mostly static, I think that's perfectly fine. Yes, keystone correction is part of the features, but especially in rooms that aren't pitch black, you often see soft edges or boundary shadows with the keystone. Lens shifts, if it works as promised, should eliminate that trade-off. Over the last few years, XGMI has built a reputation for delivering excellent image quality and pushing the envelope on home cinema. I've been running an XGMI projector at home for three years now, and I favored the Horizon line. The specs for the projecting qualities are there for you to read, but for the average user, they often don't tell you the whole story. Let me put it this way, in a dim room, the experience will outshine most TVs due to the immersion factor. Interestingly, XGMI claims that even the modest Horizon 20 is brighter than their own Horizon Ultra in the S Max line, though not as bright as their Horizon 20 Pro or Max variants. This is bold. In my testing, the brightness measurements were consistent. Color accuracy is excellent. In terms of color science, this unit feels closer to the Horizon Ultra series as opposed to the S Max line, which I actually prefer. The Horizon 20 builds on the design language of the earlier generations with subtle refinements. Packaging feels premium and they even include this portable box, handy for outdoor use. I've tested mine outside a few times and this is an appreciated new accessory. It all feels high-end. At 4.8 kilograms, it's, it's rock solid on a table. The new stand feels robust too, though for me it stays up mounted to the ceiling because there is less risk from my 4 year old who treats everything like a toy. If you're looking for something more mobile, the dedicated stand is worth considering. On the back, we now see ports for both analog and digital audio, plus HDMI, USB 3, a welcome upgrade for media playback bandwidth. If you're into the numbers, here's the headline specs they advertise. There's the MediaTek MT9679 system on a chip, 4 GB of RAM, 128 GB storage, up to 3200 ISO lumens, 1 millisecond response in game mode, projecting capability of up to 300 inches, lens shifting and optical zoom technologies, HDR10+, Dolby Vision, infinite color and film standard support, Google TV is the operating system, and it it also can run 3D videos. Honestly, at this spec sheet, there's little you can ask for in a modern high-end home cinema projector, unless you're chasing very niche extremes. Yes, it supports 3D movies. Yes, it supports HDR+. Yes, we finally have properly working inbuilt Netflix, which was missing in the previous generations. So there are a lot of claims for improvements and we can see such in many other aspects as well, so we carry on testing. Autofocus is fast and auto keystone works well when you're not perfectly aligned to the wall. But before you mess with the keystone, try the lens shift. This is the feature I'm most excited about. Vertigo shift of plus minus 120% is what XGMI claims, horizontally up to 45%. 
Also, don't forget, Optical Zoom is present, which gives you framing flexibility without any digital scaling. Regarding the latency, with autofocus and with Keystone both active, you're looking at a certain floor, not as close to zero. Without them, in ideal mode, it can approach the one millisecond claim. This, at least, is the promise that the system on a chip is currently capable of. As for audio, we have a Harman Kardon integrated system. The sound is directed cleverly, not just outward, but in a way that gives the impression that the speakers sit behind the screen. With this new generation, the bass goes down to 55 Hz. In real rooms, do some testing. You can check the volume, whether it is enough, how clean are the mids, and whether there's going to be any distortion at high levels. In my case, it feels superb. Going for connectivity and media handling topic and the addition of USB 3 is a strong move. High bitrate video files should stream without any stutters and you've got two HDMI ports, one of which supports EARC, there's digital audio out plus the analog output, USB 3 and another USB 2.0 port. As for the wireless communication, we have current versions of Bluetooth and Wi-Fi both. I'm pretty sure you're going to like the software too. There's the iconic XGMI picture panel. Everything is just a few taps away. For those who want more, go to the advanced settings. There are deep menus and tuning options which are capable of adjusting nearly everything. With the 4 gigs of RAM, Google TV runs smoothly here and having 128 gigabytes of storage is a real bonus. One minor letdown, the system on a chip is still using DDR3 memory, not DDR4 or higher, but in practice most apps should run fine and even gaming is absolutely fine. Now, if you wonder why I'm calling the Horizon 20 the only projector line that I can strongly recommend for great gaming, I can point to two reasons. The computing hardware, which is stronger, and usually when gaming mode is enabled, Keystone correction gets disabled, which causes image deformation. Here, thanks to the lens shift and the optical adjustments, you don't lose geometry in game mode, so problem solved. And yeah, gaming feels unmatched for a projector in this class. But before the wrap-up, can we still recognize certain negatives and caveats? Well, it's still too early to judge the long-term reliability, but XGMI are famous for their exceptional hardware quality. On the software side, I've seen minor glitches already. Pretty sure most of them are going to be smoothened out through the updates. There is no black color option. It's all in one finish, so you either like it or not. And in extreme lighting condition, any projector has limits. Don't expect miracles under full daylight, meaning that probably that's the use case where you would still prefer a TV. But nothing so far has distracted me from what is otherwise a stellar experience. To me, the Horizon 20 is the sweet spot. It occupies its own class, and unless you're chasing monster lumen counts or ultra-specialized uses, I think 3200 ISO lumens is more than enough for most home setups. In my own use, in past projectors, I was rarely pushing them above 50% brightness, and here I mostly talk about the Horizon Ultra series, and the extra power you might need from the Max or the Pro I think would be only necessary if you're planning to project on super large screens up to 300 inches or in very, very bright room conditions. I can confidently say that this unit is gonna quickly become a community favorite. Looks like XGMI have listened to many most wanted community requests, such as the lens shift technology, the USB 3.0, the Netflix support, the backlit remote, and the Horizon 20 line will only summon the status as being one of the top names in the high-end home cinema projector area. All right, well, thanks for watching this review. If you would like to see some specific tests, such as uh, calibrations or AGR testing or gaming benchmarks and so on, just drop a comment down below and I'm gonna dig deeper for you. If you're thinking about getting one of these for you, 
Um, all the necessary information and links is available in the video description. Just remember, this isn't an ad and I only recommend tech that's worth your money and only if you actually need it. And hey, if you enjoyed this video this far, please give me a like, subscribe to the channel for more cool tech inspections and I, Michael, wish you a fantastic day. Bye.